slice is nice. Slice is even nicer if you can use it in multiple ways. Now, I want to hear from you what you use your slices for, and they can be forehands or backhands. So let me know down in the comments what you use your slices for. I'm going to show you a lot of aggressive ways as well as defensive ways on how to use the slice and not just backhands, forehands as well. So let's get going. All right, so the first use is rallying. And what you're trying to do with your slice there is you break your opponent's rhythm because it has a different speed, it has different height, and it has a different spin. So we're just going to hit some slices here on the backhand and actually on the forehand. So that is the slice that, of course, everybody knows. And I can do the same on the forehand side. and you see what Brian is doing, it's actually a lot easier for him every now and then to use a slice off my slice. So that's your regular rally ball. The second use of a slice is an approach shot. The beautiful thing is because it's a little slower, you have more time to come in. Ideally, you're already in your continental grip and they have to lift the ball up to you. And it's way easier, if a ball is short, to actually get under the ball on your own side. And I can come in with that with the slice. And then I'm already, oh, and I'm making that. And then I'm already in my volley grip, and it's easier to move in that way. So again, coming in, I'm in my proper grip. So we're combining that with defensive skills. Look what Brian is doing off my approach shot or my first volley. So I'm coming in and he's lobbing me. Now on that first one, that was a little too short, but that's a really good ball, especially when he draws me in with the ball and I have to move in. And the second ball is a lob. The drop shot is something that I think is really neglected, especially in recreational tennis. Now you want to hit a drop shot off a ball that has a little bit of an angle and is a little shorter. It doesn't make as much sense to try to hit a drop shot from up here because it's a long time in the air. My opponent can read it. Plus to get it down means also it's gonna bounce higher. So let's see if I can go with a drop shot. All right, so here's my drop shot attempt. That's a perfect feat. There we go. All right, now of course I would recover back. I'm not admiring my shot. I'm just carving that off. Now, once I've drop shot it cross cord a couple of times, then I can go down the line. But I don't want to start going down the line to my mind because it's the higher part of the net. It's easier for the ball to really bounce up if I'm messing up a cross cord drop shot at least it has an angle. But the goal for me, of course, is to draw my opponent in. And the cue to hit a drop shot is not only the ball where it's coming, but also, of course, where my opponent is. So if Brian is 18 feet behind the baseline, it's a great opportunity to hit a drop shot. Another way to use your slice is there's so many. Slice is great. Is if you have somebody who doesn't like to come in, or has a very, very deep court position is to deliberately chip the ball short. So it's not outright a drop shot. It's a little bit of a shorter ball. It's gonna sit low and I'm forcing my opponent to come up. So let's see how that goes. So let's say we're in a long rally and I want the ball a little bit shorter. Do you see that? He is struggling big time. Ah, oh, and then I missed that one. So I'm seeing that Brian is very far behind the baseline and I'm just chipping the ball short. I'm bringing him in, and then hopefully I have a better attempt on my passing shot. A variation of that is when I'm carving the ball off with an angle, because that's really easy to do. And let's see if I can do that on the forehand, because we don't see that as much. So again, Brian is very far. I'm not gonna drop shot, but I'm angling him off. And that, of course, gives me 
a wide open court. And Brian is really nice. He's being very dramatic and showing the open courts. So let's see if we can do it on the backhand side. So again, I'm trying to angle Brian off. That's exactly what I want. See here, wide open then, because it's difficult for him to choose, am I gonna come in with that ball, which is gonna take him a long time to come in, or am I gonna recover? But both times, the court is wide open. Another great use of the slice, of course, is defensive skills. So Brian is pushing me out wide, and I'm gonna hit my slice, and because it's a little slower, I have more time to recover. So it gives me a million years. Well, okay, maybe not quite a million years, but it gives me a lot of time because the slice is a little slower, and also hopefully it gives my opponent a little bit of trouble because he can't quite get under the ball as naturally as he would when I'm rolling the ball. So let's try it one more time. There we go. And you know what? You can do the same on the forehand side. So that is exactly the ball that I wanted because it's slow and I have time to come back in the middle. And it's gonna break up rhythm. Nobody is used to seeing a slice on the floor and a whole lot anymore. So let me see. I love that shot. If I manage to get it deep, better. But if I manage to actually get an angle on the ball, a slice is a fantastic defensive tool right there. Now the way to use a slice or a chip is as a lob. So another defensive ball. Oh, especially against the sun, that's great. And then I'm messing that one up. <laughs> Blinded by the light. So especially when somebody hits a really sticky approach shot or a hard approach shot, it's difficult to get under the ball if it's low. It's difficult to get under the ball and hit an aggressive topspin lob. So it is a little easier to just hit a lift lob. So I'm running out here. And again, it gives me a lot of time and it is a great tool against the sun. Oh, he's gonna go for the tweener. Another option of the slice or chip is when my partner opponent is coming in and I wanna keep the ball low to make him volley up to me. If I can't get under the ball with a topspin shot, I can dip it and it's a little slower so that I can hopefully, out of a defensive position, can get into a better defending position. So if I just dump that in front, and then I can lob, that was lucky because I actually didn't change my grip. So Brian is coming in, and I dink it in front of him, and then, yeah, winner. Now, if we talk about the slice, we cannot forget the Steffi Graf pattern. Move and maneuver your opponent in a way that they end up hitting a shorter ball that you can then step around and use your forehand. So I'm using a lot of the varieties of that slice to force Brian to give me a ball that I can step around on. So an angle there, angles off defensive slice, carving off a higher ball, then I can step around and then I missed that one. So we have to do it again. So I'm trying to move him around a little bit more. I can angle that off, keep it deeper. And I have time to step around that. And Brian is pretending that he's not getting the ball. So that's very nice. Using a chip return, block return, slice return, whatever you want to call it. If I have no time to get a big wind up in or when I'm stretched, I switch into my continental and I block the ball back, chip it back again to give myself more time and hopefully get into a better defensive position. That was a great example right there. He pulls me out wide. Perfect. Ooh, that was a lucky return, but it is so fast. His serve is so good that I don't have the time. I feel I can't really swing, so I'm just blocking it.